That's it. I just wanted to make sure I didn't start talking over music. God is with us and let the people say, here we find new life. Good morning and welcome to First Church of Christ in Simsbury. Um, I, I see some folks still returning after a time away over the summer, so that's nice. I see some new folks and relatively new folks, and it just uh, brings joy to my heart, truly. It just makes me a happy, happy person on a Sunday morning. Um, you've already seen that there are some wonderful additions to the service this morning. We have our Ham Bell Choir offering their first uh, performance of the new church year, so we're thrilled about that. Um, we are welcoming new members into the church this morning, and in just a little bit you'll see those good folks standing up here uh, making their commitment to membership, and that's always very exciting. And this is the first Sunday of our stewardship season, which is our season of giving. In fact, the theme this year is from bread and cup to faith and giving. Those of you who are on our mailing list would have received a letter from me and a packet of information to help you think about that. We'll hear a little bit more about that in a little while in the service. Um, I would like to uh, just, there are some moving parts, and I want to get those out there now so they don't make you anxious when we spring them on you later in the service. Um, this here is what we call our tithing box. It is something that has a history and a tradition here at First Church, and we bust it out during our stewardship season. Um, it will be out for the next several Sundays um, as people ponder their annual pledge to the church. We are not asking that you make that commitment this morning, this being the first Sunday of the stewardship season, but we are gonna get in the habit of the tithing box. And what that means is that instead of passing the offering plate, at the appointed time, we will invite you to come forward and either place your offering in the tithing box, recognizing that not everybody um, brings a weekly offering anymore because many people give online, maybe many people pay their pledge quarterly or all these, all these various ways of giving. So um, we again have put a little slip of paper in your bulletin that invites you to share your name and any information that we might not have already. So this is what I'm asking of you. If you are a regular attender or a member, all we would ask is that you put your first and last name on that slip of paper. Um, if you have already shared your contact information with us, we got you so we don't need that anymore. If you are really here for the first time or um, have not yet been able to share that information with us, we would ask you to fill it out. It gives Rev. Kev and I an opportunity to follow up. I assure you that's a very gentle and non-threatening follow-up. Um, I, I even, I won't embarrass anybody, but I could even call witnesses this morning that, um, um, that is, that is non-threatening. I, uh, uh, 
made a lovely visit to a, a couple on Saturday morning, and it was, um, I think they would agree that they aren't, don't have any bruises or um, yeah, are, no, are none the worse for wear. So there, there they are, and they're nodding. So, um, so if you would, please, um, if we don't have it already, please share a little contact information. And when we do invite you forward, you could just put that in the tithing box, making offering of yourself. And that's how, that's how we'll do that this morning. I think we'll say a little more about membership when the time comes. I probably didn't even, I probably launched into all that without properly introducing myself. I'm Reverend George Harris. People call me Pastor George. I'm joined here by my uh, dear friend and colleague, Reverend Kevin Weichel, known as Rev Kev. Uh, uh, Mark Mercier, Jim Martoccio, Jonathan at the tech boards. Uh, we have a whole a cast here that makes this worship service possible and just go brilliantly smoothly so that it, you don't even know what's happening behind the scenes. So um, it is my pleasure always to welcome you. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Uh, that means that no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us be together in prayer. Righteous one, we are thankful that justice flows from you like a stream. You bid us to come and experience the equity of your love. We rejoice in knowing that justice is an aspect of your love and is without end. Enable us to be steadfast in our hope in you as we work alongside you to ensure those who need justice receive it. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please rise as you're able for the call to worship. Righteous one, you are ever listening. We come boldly lifting our praise to you because we know you hear us. Bringer of justice, you reveal truth to us. You help us to see how things are and how they can be. Eternal God, you persist in love and justice. We, we want, want to persist, persist in, in love and justice. And justice. seated. 
And I'd like to invite those who are entering into membership this morning to please come forward at this time. You can kind of line up perhaps along here. And Bill, is this um, going to be you? Tell them about the flowers. <laughs> um, it's always a pleasure to welcome new members into the church. Um, in fact, Bill, I think Charnay is coming in now. So why don't you, could you go out and greet her and, and, and walk her in? Thank you. Are you all? <laughs> I don't think I have a joke. If I had a joke, I would tell it now. <laughs> yeah. So let me let me just get started with the introductions, and um, I know Charnay will be taking her place here in just a moment. So um, on the right end here are Frank Quinn and Lisa Argenta. Um, you often see them here with their daughter Gibson, uh, who was baptized with Frank here just a few months ago. They've been residents of Simsbury for six years. Uh, I already mentioned their daughter Gibson, who attends Squadron Line schools. Frank is an assistant principal in Glastonbury, and Lisa is an art teacher. They frequently visit Savannah, Georgia, and their household is both artistic and musical. Christopher Drew and Katie Martin. They have lived in Simsbury for over 25 years. They have two sons, Carson, age 24, and Brian, age 22. They are also host parents for Kenny Arowajoy from Nigeria, age 23. They enjoy listening to live music, playing various sports, including sand volleyball, and visiting breweries. Charnay Gordon and her husband, Barrington Gordon Jr., have been residents of Simsbury for three years. They have two children, Madison, age 10, and Barrington, age 8, both of whom attend Latimer Lane School. Barrington works for Berkshire Hathaway, and Charnay works as a marketing director, and she is also a children's book author and a nonprofit founder. Latoya, who is upstairs with our children, uh, is a native of Virginia and has been a believer in Christ since she was nine years old. Uh, her favorite person is her son, Dante. Uh, she lives with her two dogs, Daisy and Nico, whom she spoils at every chance she gets. She has served her local ministry as a youth leader, worship leader, choir member, hospitality committee, and executive administrator, and of course now serves here as the director of children's ministry. Finally, on my left here is Ned Edwards. He is the dean of faculty and director of the Capabilities Approach program at Ethel Walker School. He's an ordained minister in the United Church of Christ and has spent half his career in parish ministry, pastoring four churches, and half in education, working at three different all-girls schools. Ned and his wife, Gwen Couch, live in Simsbury with their cat, Loaf, great name, and are blessed to have their daughter, son-in-law, and granddaughter in town as well. Congregation, I invite you to say with me the 1697 church covenant that was addressed to our church's first members and all members since. So I don't know whether you stand or you sit or... Yeah, let's stand. Stand as you're able. Stand as the spirit moves you. You'll see what we're saying up on the board if you want to. And remember, this is kind of uh, old English language, so uh, just, just read it out. <laughs> You do all here, solemnly here, in the fear of God's all presence of this congregation, avouch God and Jesus Christ to be your God, and you do give up yourselves and yours to be the Lord's, to submit to his rule and government in his church, 
to obey his commands, walk in all righteous duties toward God, in love toward your neighbors, and that you will do your duty in bringing up your children in the knowledge and fear of God according to the scriptures. Thank you. You may be seated. I usually like to point out that I, um, th there was a time that I didn't fully appreciate that, that, that covenant uh, because of the language. It's not a language that we really use today, including it's very, very strongly patriarchal. Um, but the fact is that ours is a church based on covenant, and that is a, a sacred commitment, a sacred promise that includes um, the congregation, includes God, and includes these good people. And that's what binds us together. And so um, I still find it very significant that we are able to share that um, after some 300 years plus, that it still um, uh, binds us together, not just here today, but over the centuries. So I now have some words that are um, easier to say uh, for, our, for those joining the church this morning. Do you affirm your faith in God? as made known in and through Jesus Christ. If so, please respond, I do. I do. Do you promise by the grace of God to be disciples of Jesus, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, to witness to the work and words of Jesus as best as you are able? If so, please say, I do. I do. When you look in the mirror, will you remember that you are made in God's image and loved by God? Will you do your best to look for the image of God in everyone around you? in people of all nations and races. If so, please respond, I do. I do. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to never stop seeking, searching, and growing in your faith, to continue asking questions, and praying, and worshiping, and singing, and participating in the life and mission of the Church Universal and First Church of Christ Simsbury? If so, please respond, I promise, with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Latoya got the last one in there, so if you would go, go stand up there next to, I'll give you the other ones after church, okay? <laughs> a busy woman on Sunday mornings. We're so glad that Latoya could join us just in time for the welcome. So you can remain seated for this, but it's going to go up on the board. I invite you to welcome with me our newest members. We then, members of Church of Jesus Christ, Welcome you with joy into our communion and fellowship. We pledge you our sympathy, our help, and our prayers, that you may evermore increase in the knowledge and love of God. God grant that, loving and being loved, serving and being served, we may be prepared while we dwell together on the earth for the perfect fellowship of the life everlasting. Let us be together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, uh, what an extraordinary assembly of faithful that stand before us this morning making this decision to join with your church, with this body of Christ at First Church of Christ in Simsbury. We give you thanks for each one. Uh, may we be faithful in our response to them, to walk with them, support them, encourage them as they uh, find their way into the fabric of this church. May we not be shy about reaching out to them, introducing ourselves, inviting out for a cup of coffee. And likewise, may they be bold in uh, stepping out into things perhaps unfamiliar as they uh, reinforce and connect with you in this body of Christ the church. Bless them, uh, protect them, encourage them. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Shake or flowers? Shake plants. first. Shake first, yeah. and then we got plants coming. So uh, <laughs> that's very exciting and new. So I'll, I'll start down here. Welcome. Hi. Yes, Sharnay, welcome. Frank. Oh, Lisa. Welcome. Welcome. Yeah. Um, or flowers. No, we have plants coming, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are the first to receive plants. We always did like a, literally a corn, carnation corsage, and it just seemed like that was a little uh, dated. So, so we are giving you plants instead. So um, um, go forth in God's love, and let's uh, give them a, a warm welcome.
As we do each week, let us take a time of reflection and consider those places in our lives where we fall short and miss the mark. Let us join together in our unison prayer of confession. Righteous One, we are thankful that justice flows from you like a stream. You bid us to come and experience the equity of your love. We rejoice in knowing that justice is an aspect of your love and is without end. Enable us to be steadfast in our hope in you as we work alongside you to ensure those who need justice to receive it. Amen. God's love is higher than the mountains and deeper than the valleys, and it reaches all aspects of our lives. We give thanks for God's grace and mercy that never ceases to forgive. For this, we give thanks to God. Amen.
A reading from the book of Luke, chapter 18, verses 1 through 8. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for the people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him, saying, Grant me justice against my accuser. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? These are holy words. Thanks be to God. Take out the papers and the trash. Or you don't get no spending cash. If you don't scrub that kitchen floor, you ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't talk back. Just finish cleaning up your room. Let's see that just fly up that room. Get all that garbage out of sight. Or you don't go out Friday night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't talk back. talk back. (laughs) I rarely listen to the lyrics of songs. Of course, I knew that tagline from this 1958 song by the Coasters, but I never realized that it is sung in the voice of a parent to their teenager. (laughs) Take out the papers in the trash, or you don't get no spending cash. If you don't scrub that kitchen floor, you ain't gonna rock and roll no more. Each verse contains scolding for the child for not doing the chores and ends with the admonishment, yakety yak, don't talk back. Now the teenager being threatened with punishment in the song no doubt sees it differently. Instead of seeing themselves as the lazy and disobedient child, they likely believe they are standing up for themselves, protesting the unfairness of their treatment at home, promoting the cause of liberation not talking back, but speaking up. Don't talk back. It's a message we start hearing from childhood. I was raised with the words that children are to be seen, but not heard. It's a message we carry into adulthood. Don't talk about religion, politics, and money, three of the most important things in our adult lives. 
Don't talk back is the voice of authority, sometimes threatening, other times more subtle. Encouragement to be kind, respectful, and polite often implies that we should keep our mouth shut rather than saying something contrary. It is easy to internalize such messages leading us to keep silent rather than creating a fuss. I see this impulse in my mother. For example, when we go out to dinner and there is something obviously wrong with her food, despite, despite encouragements to return the meal, mom will insist, it's okay, as she gamely takes a few small bites and would rather leave food on her plate than speak up for what is right and return the meal. This desire to keep it positive can run especially strong in church. Hesitating to speak out, especially if our thoughts seem to run contrary to the prevailing opinion. In fact, some interpretations of our faith suggest that we should not respond, not speak up when wronged, turn the other cheek, and all that. Yet here, in this morning's parable, a woman is persistently talking back to a judge. We are told that he neither fears God nor has respect for people. The woman is being wrongly accused of something, and she persists in appealing to the judge in order to obtain justice for herself. The judge repeatedly refuses to hear and respond to her plea, but finally gives in just so she'll stop bothering him, so she'll go away. Now this is a rather extraordinary story for Jesus to tell for many reasons, especially because of the power difference between the widow and the judge. Jewish and Roman societies at the time were very patriarchal. Women took their identity and worth from their husbands and were seen as having little value on their own. So a widow with no man to provide for her was seen as insignificant, even a burden not deserving of respect. That she should repeatedly talk back to a judge, speaking up for herself and prevail is remarkable. Jesus' disciples would have certainly been shocked by the example, and an example of how to talk to God. Jesus is using this parable to teach his disciples how to pray, to pray always and not lose heart, to cry to God night and day. But it seems a fair interpretation that when we speak up, that when we talk back, when we lift our voice to say what we believe, God moves in our lives. This is true when we speak up for justice for all. That's why we have a banner hanging in front of the church that says black lives matter to us and to God. But it is just as important as in the case of the woman in the parable that we not keep silent about what we believe for ourselves and in our church. Unlike my mother, who will never return a meal at a restaurant, my wife, Lourdes, has no such reservations. <laughs> she used to work as a cocktail waitress at the Outrigger Reef Hotel in Waikiki, and she would take a customer's order back for any reason, no questions asked. The customer was always right. After all, here they were on their once-in-a-lifetime vacation to Hawaii. The last thing they needed was to have a meal that they didn't love, much less feel badly about returning it. And she has the same expectations as a customer. She deserves to be happy with her meal and will return her food sometimes repeatedly <laughs> and sometimes simply because it wasn't what she expected and she doesn't like it. <laughs> now there is support for such talking back in our Protestant and congregational tradition. Of course, Martin Luther set the Protestant Reformation in motion by famously nailing his 95 theses, his 95 talking back to the Catholic Church criticisms, nailing these to the door of the church in Wittenberg, Germany. And congregationalism, though it wasn't always practiced this way by our Puritan forefathers, and yes, in this case, it was still patriarchal forefathers, but congregational theology proposes that God moves through the working of the congregation. 
the gathered church is understood to act as the body of Christ in the world. This understanding works best when everyone is heard, when everyone participates, everyone speaks up, everyone talks back. If the congregation is silent, might God also be silent? Now, I recognize that there are people who have been traumatized, truly traumatized, by experiences with conflict and as a result, avoid confrontation at all cost. I also recognize that in our country today, we have so many people shouting at each other that we can't even hear ourselves think, much less find our voice to talk back. I am not suggesting that we roll up our sleeves to enter such an endless cycle of recrimination, not at all. I am not talking even about conflict or confrontation. Rather, it is the church's responsibility to provide a safe place for each and all to be heard. We understand that God moves through the participation of the members of the church, not as in the parable, an individual talking back, but through the rich and varied voices of the body of Christ, the church, creating complex harmonies with just enough dissonance to make us feel fully alive. So we might reflect upon how we can apply this lesson in our personal lives, but this morning I want to end with a couple church-related observations. There are two things unique to the service this morning, the welcome of new members to the church and the opening of our annual stewardship campaign. Now, new members might feel especially cautious about speaking up, not sure if they might violate some unspoken convention or cause some weighty church leader to bristle. But for those good people who joined the church this morning, I not only give you permission, but encourage you, indeed implore you, to speak up, talk back. We need to hear your voice, benefit from your participation, if God's movement among us is to be fully revealed. And shortly you will see a fabulous slideshow kicking off our five-week stewardship campaign. We have all heard the expression, money talks. Despite the admonishment not to talk about religion, politics, or money, money is one of the primary ways that we communicate what we value. Sure, we can say what is important to us, but the surest sign of what is really important to us is our bank account, our credit card statements, our monthly bills. So as we enter this stewardship season, let your giving to the church speak for you as well as your words. It is absolutely true that the more we participate in the church, the more we give, and conversely, the more we give, the more we participate in the church. Your life, the church, indeed the realm of God, is meant to be the most delicious meal, and if you are being served anything less, do not lose heart. Speak up, talk back, cry, night and day, until that meal is everything you ever dreamed of and more. Do this yourself in your prayers, and do this by participating fully in the giving and life of this good church. We are the body of Christ, the church, and God's movement among us will be most fully revealed when we give, participate, and talk back. When I say yakety yak, you say talk back. <laughs> when I say yakety yak, you say <laughs> through your cry for justice, yakety yak. Talk back. Through your participation in the church, yakety yak. Talk back. And through your giving, yakety yak. Talk back. And God will grant us justice in our lives, in our church, and in the world. Amen. <laughs>
be seated. Here we are at the time of sharing our celebrations, our concerns, and as we do each week, I'll mention aloud any that are new or that have changed, then invite us to pray over the prayer list and then see what additional names and places are on your hearts. <clears throat> we begin with some celebrations. We celebrate our new members. Uh, really grateful for the covenant and commitment um, and the promises that took place here this morning and we look forward to growing in relationship with our new members. Um, also I want to give thanks to, look, look at this choir, look at all these folks up here and they're singing yakety yak, don't talk back. <laughs> and, uh, so just, just wonderful, thank you to our musicians. Also I want to mention Marissa Caponetti who has finished her treatment for uh, osteosarcoma um, her port has been removed. Um, we just pray continued uh, healing for Caponetti family. Um, we're really grateful for um, where they are now. I know it's been a long journey. Um, and in many ways, that, that journey still uh, continues as they um, make their way, um, thinking about all that they've been through. So we'll continue to journey with them, but mostly give God thanks for where they find themselves right now. We pray comfort and strength for those who are uh, sick or recovering from surgery or looking for healing um, in body or in relationship. So for Ashley Mercer Schwitter's mother, Fran, and her younger sister, Kristen, uh, Ashley prays that they can find a way to forgive one another and reconcile. And she also lifts up all families um, that have rifts. For Angelo Lamardo, our Friday night supper chef who has been diagnosed with leukemia, he is in the hospital starting chemotherapy. For Catherine King, who is recuperating at home after a hospital stay. We pray prayers of solace and of peace for uh, the family of Bill Lawry, whose interment will take place in the church memorial garden uh, this afternoon. And we pray for our church as we begin our stewardship campaign. I know there are some people that say, oh no, the stewardship campaign. <laughs> I think it's a, a beautiful blessing for us to find ways um, to, as, as we talk together about what it means to support this good church. We pray for the families of the two Bristol police officers shot and killed uh, responding to the call, uh, Sergeant Dustin DeMonte and Officer Alex Hamsey, and for all of our responders um, who are putting themselves in harm's way and sometimes um, don't even know it. So I'll invite you now, if you take a, a deep breath and a moment of silent prayer to view uh, the names on the prayer list, to be in prayer for those folks. Uh, there are many on there that I did not mention aloud. And to be thinking of other folks in your life that you would like uh, to pray for. And then I'll ask folks to share. Names, places on your hearts this day that you'd like to mention aloud. Yes. For Christ and his angels to walk with us and give us strength. For Christ and his angels to walk with us to give us strength. Thank you for that prayer, Joey. Dawn? Prayers for the doctors and my husband is getting his knee replaced on Tuesday. Oh, Chris Medvey getting his knee replaced on Tuesday. Prayers for the doctors. Prayers for Chris. Yes, Lou Anne. Thank you, Luann. Prayers for, for your family, for healing, and for strength. Thank you. Nancy. 
Yeah. celebrate with Lucas, that is for sure. Thank you for sharing. Deb, uh, some, some heard that Abby was um, in the emergency room this week. She did. She had a seizure, and, uh, spent about four hours in the emergency room, and um, was sent home, and um, is uh, kind of revived and um, back, back about her life. So I'm grateful for that. Thank you for sharing, George. Prayers, continued prayers for Abby and for George and for Lourdes as they the three of them walk together on this journey um, and help us to continue to find ways to be supportive. You can request prayers to be on the prayer list. You can either call the church office. You can go online. There's a way to uh, submit your prayers there. Um, it's just so important for us as a church to be uh, together in prayer. It is truly what binds us together. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Holy One, as we come to prayer, we remember that we do not have to twist your arm, O oh God. We do not have to convince you to seek good things for us or this world. We do not have to persuade you to come near and listen to us. You want what is good. You want what is right. You want what is just. And so let us remember that when we pray, as we are right now, we kneel alongside Jesus. When we pray, we are in the presence of God. We have the help and the guidance of the Spirit. With that in mind, we collect now, bring together all of these prayers that we have shared, all of these prayers that we have read, all of these prayers that we have heard and all of the prayers that are so deep for words that we do not speak them aloud. We pray for all people who are ill or anxious, those who are lonely or sad. We pray for those despairing, defeated, those hungry and experiencing homelessness. We pray for those whose relationships are breaking apart. We pray for those bullied or abused. We pray for those who cannot find work, for those who are overworked, and those who are weighed down by financial burdens. In the presence of you, O oh God, alongside your son Jesus, with the help from the Spirit and guidance from the Spirit, may we go into this week to live out our prayers through the living of our lives. We pray all of this in the one, in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Announcements. I'd like to mention that uh, the flowers this week are given in uh, honor of Jim, uh, by Jim Fuller in honor of his father, uh, Richard, who would have turned uh, 100 on October 14th. Wow. Um, so I want to also mention uh, the pumpkin patch. 
We are now in the middle of October, which means the middle of the pumpkin patch. We had 2,500 pumpkins. They are just about half gone. Some have been eaten by bears. <laughs> uh, so yesterday morning, the bears found the pumpkin patch. And we know that bears uh, are um, creatures of routine. Uh, so we're a little worried about that. But um, you might want to get your pumpkin sooner rather than later. <laughs> Please do, you know, uh, get your pumpkins from our patch. They, it, the, the, the funds go to a great cause. Uh, ABC House in Simsbury, the Simsbury Food Bank, and our youth mission trips. It's in partnership with uh, Trinity Church, so that's a wonderful thing as well. And the pumpkins are from New Mexico, uh, from uh, the Navajo Native American Reservation, so quite a few funds go back to them as well. So it's, it's all good stuff, and they're great uh, pumpkins. Um, we, we actually have folks that come by um, just for our pumpkins, because they are so unique, uh, being from display. New Mexico. It is, it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is so beautiful that, you know, you might want to just spend two hours there um, <laughs> working a shift. Um, there is a, there's a sign of genius online that you can find. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so yes, we, we, uh, we'll, keep, we'll send that around uh, that's on the Facebook page. You can always use folks to help at the Pumpkin Patch because each shift needs an adult and uh, a team. So if you could uh, help out, that would be awesome. Um, let's see here. Uh, I lost my announcements. Kevin? Uh, Friday night, yes, Mark. Real briefly, uh, starting a men's choir this coming Thursday, 645, here in Rome. So if you're a guy that likes to sing, come on by. Yeah, that's it. awesome. Um, Friday night supper this Friday evening. Um, it takes place right here. Please come out. It's a wonderful time to, to enjoy uh, breaking bread with church members and community members. Uh, you, the, the meal is served. All you do is sit there and converse with one another. Uh, it's just a wonderful, wonderful time. So please come on out for that. Um, and now I would like to introduce our stewardship moment. Um, our stewardship team this year is just absolutely incredible. And uh, Susan Babcock White spent so much time uh, on this, and we're just very, very excited uh, for you to uh, watch this video as we open our stewardship campaign. Whenever we are asked to support an organization financially, we want to know who they are and what they do. So let's take a moment to look at First Church. You may be familiar with some of what this community of faith does, but there may be some activities that surprise or delight you. Who is First Church? We dedicate ourselves to the sacraments and special observances of our Christian faith, baptisms, weddings, funerals, communion, and the holy days of the church calendar. But we also share and create fellowship and community. We tell Bible stories in engaging and creative ways and involve anyone and everyone that we can. And we tell other stories that are historically important for all of us to remember. We are passionate about our youth and youth programs and take an all hands approach to raising youth in the church and involving them in our mission to serve God. We protect and respect the safety of our children and all God's children, young and old. We love to sing inside and out, upstairs and down, whenever and wherever we can. We aren't afraid to take a stand for what is right and just. And we support causes of justice and equality. As we say every Sunday morning, we are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. We know how to be creative when circumstances change. And we know how to have fun. We do our best to spread joy. 
among ourselves, and to all others we encounter. We travel to places both near and far from home to do God's work, and we roll up our sleeves. We love to feed people at church through food programs like Food Share and Sarah Stops Hunger, and in every way possible. We realize the importance of sending the right message and remind our members and those whom we serve that they are important to us and cherished by God. We take care of our space here on earth and we care for the spaces of others both near and far from home. And we've been doing all of this and more for a very, very long time. From bread and cup to faith and giving. We are First Church Simsbury. We hope that you will continue to support all that we do and all that we are and will increase your existing support or add your name and financial support for the first time. We are First Church. Thanks be to God. Whenever we are asked to support an organization for me,
Aaron Waterman on bass, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for a, a joyful day of worship of you, uh, for the music, for the prayers, for the, uh, the words, for the new members, um, all of it blending together as a, a gift to you this morning. May we go forth today as uh, walking in the footsteps of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, let me extend um, this invitation before I pray us out. Um, I invite those who joined the church this morning. Um, you don't have to line up, but if you are able to linger for a little while uh, following worship, if you'd like to just sort of assemble toward the front of the parish hall, and that would give others in the congregation an opportunity to greet you and introduce themselves to you. Um, I've never done this before, but let me offer this suggestion as well um, for those members in the congregation. Um, feel free if you'd like to invite somebody out for a cup of coffee or, um, you know, exchange numbers. And I say that giving permission to the new members to say, no, thank you, not right now, because it's not a good time. <laughs> Because knowing this congregation, you might get eight such invitations this morning, and, and that might just seem a little overwhelming. But, but, but feel free. I mean, it's something that Kevin and I do all the time. We do coffee all the time. Uh, it's something in the community organizing initiative that we're a part of. We do one-on-ones, and we're always pairing up. We're always exchanging numbers. We're always getting together with people. And it's a beautiful thing. And so um, um, if you feel inspired by that, uh, feel free to reach out to somebody and uh, extend that invitation. Now may the spirit of the living God made known most fully to us in Jesus Christ go before you to show you the way, go above you to watch over you, go behind you to nudge you into places you might not go by yourselves, go beneath you to uphold and uplift you, go beside you to be your strong and constant companion and dwell within you that you may know that you are never, ever alone and that you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing go before you now and always. Amen.